Hello everybody and welcome to the Kangaroo English Daily Digest. Today is Thursday, best day of the week. Uh, big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for making this Daily Digest possible. Okay, so today's word of the day is... Da, 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 this one. Taciturn. 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 Taciturn is an adjective and it basically means a person, it describes a person who doesn't really like to talk a lot. A quiet person. It comes from the Latin tacere, which means to be silent. It makes sense, right? A taciturn person is a silent person, a person who doesn't like to talk. And from taciturn, we have another adjective that we can make, which is this, tacit. And you might, the most common use of this is when people talk about a tacit agreement or a tacit um, solution, right? Which is a, an agreement which is not communicated verbally, it's communicated silently. So, for example, imagine um, you, you go to a party with your, your friend, but the party's really bad, you're really bored at the party. And so, you know, you, you look at your friend like... This, and he knows that, you know, that it's time to leave. This is a tacit agreement. You nod, you nod. A silent agreement. Um, and, if, and if you make a tacit agreement, maybe it's because you're a taciturn person. So, the second thing I wanted to talk to you about today is sort of not really related to English. It's more related to, well, it, 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 it's strongly related to psychology. It, it is psychology. It's about being happy, actually. Um, because, you know, when, when you're a teacher, you can't just be concerned with the material, okay? That's part of being a teacher. The, uh, uh, there are other really important parts. Um, in fact, you know, the, the science tells us that what happens in the classroom the environment in the classroom, the dynamics, all of that is more important to learning than the actual content of the lesson. Which kind of makes sense if you think about it. Like if you're not happy, then you're not going to learn. If you're not stimulated, if you don't have good classmates, you're, you're not going to learn. It, it, makes, it makes sense. So, so the question is, if we're feeling a bit sad, if we're feeling a bit lonely, if we're feeling, um, basically, if our mental health is, is bad, how can we improve that in a simple way? Let me tell you. <laughs> okay, so um, recently, I think this is recently, uh, 2016, that's quite recently, okay, there was this paper was released, okay? It's called, it says, the name of the paper is this. Does gratitude writing improve the mental health of psychotherapy clients? Evidence from a randomized controlled trial. Okay, so it, it's very simple. Oh my god, hang on, let me just adjust it. Okay, it's ve very simple what they did. They, they had people who had not good mental health. They were depressed or, or just you know, sad, stressed, all of those negative things, okay? And they divided them into three groups. So, <laughs> that's the bread van. Let me show you. Every day, every day, someone drives through the village where I live and they deliver bread. See? Um. <laughs> See? They deliver bread. It's cool, right? Because you don't have to go to the shop if you, if you need bread. Okay. 
I'll get back in through the window. <laughs> just, you know, just village life. Normal village life things. Okay. Um, let me, uh, let, let me, let me continue. Okay, so, there was, there was, so, a group of people who had bad mental health, depressed or sad or whatever, and they divided them into three groups. The first group had only therapy with a psychologist, normal therapy. The second group had therapy and expressive writing. Basically where you write about your feelings, why you think you feel sad, why you think you feel negative, you, you express your, your emotions. And the third group did something called gratitude writing. And it explains what that is, okay? Gratitude writing, it said, they were asked to write a letter expressing gratitude to a person that they had not properly thanked. So basically, you know, in your life, people, I hope <laughs> that there are people who do just little things that are nice for you. It could be anything like maybe somebody said to you, oh, I like your hair today. N no, nobody says that to me because I, I don't have any hair, but <laughs> uh, or somebody says, um, wow, I love, I love your, the smell of your perfume. Or maybe they, they, they bring you a sandwich when you're hungry, or maybe they help you to clean your car, or any, it could be a tiny thing, a tiny thing. And so what they did was they wrote a letter to say thank you to the person. Thank you. That's it. Very, very simple. Very simple. Very simple thing. But what they discovered was incredible. So the first two groups, so the normal therapy and the expressive writing, not really, not really a dramatic change in, in mental health. The third group who did the, the gratitude writing, who said thank you to other people, dramatic improvement, dramatic improvement. Now, how could it be that just saying thank you can, 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 can change your mental health, can make you so happy. Like, like, how can that be? I've been thinking about it. And, and, and recently also I was listening to a podcast by a journalist called Sebastian Junga that was quite interesting. And he wrote a book called Tribes. And in the book Tribes, he talks about how in modern society, we are very disconnected from community. We have lost community. People live in buildings and they don't know their neighbors. People live in cities and they don't talk to people. They, they talk to their phones. And maybe the simple act of that connection with another person, because that's the difference between expressive writing and saying thank you. Making a connection with another person can increase your happiness Dramatically, because it's a natural human desire to be part of a community. So it's just something that we all want. A human natural desire. And, and, and that's, why, that's why the best way to learn a language is not by isolating yourself and sitting at a desk and memorizing stuff. It's by making connections. Because that's what makes you happy and stimulates your learning. And so the learning environment is good. You learn more. It's all connected. Your happiness and your ability to learn. And so that's why I'm always saying, you know, you can't just... It's not about, it's not about the technical stuff. Language is not about that. Language is about communicating connections with other people. So, not only will you learn English faster, but you'll be a happier person. <laughs> it's win-win. Anyway, um, I hope that you enjoyed this Daily Digest. Um, and I'll see you again tomorrow.
Bye.